Hey there, it's Chris from Good Roads, and for years I have wanted to learn to cast my own skateboard trucks. And it doesn't really seem like there's anyone out there doing that. So, I figured it out myself. I figured out how it's done, and I'm going to share it with all of you. So in this video, I'm going to be using 3D printed bucks and green sand casting to cast my own legitimate set of aluminum skateboard trucks. Let's go. Let's start with the parts of the truck. There are two metal parts that I need to cast. The hangers, the part that hold the axles, and the base plates, the part that get attached to the deck and allow the hangers to pivot. I 3D printed my bucks and then sanded them down to 220 grit. Hit them with a coat of filler primer, sanded them again, and then buffed them smooth. I got a lot of questions in my last video about why I'm going with traditional kingpin trucks instead of reverse kingpin trucks, because the hangers for reverse kingpin trucks would be easier to cast. And the short answer is I can't figure out how to cast reverse kingpin base plates in a two-part mold. I think I'll have to use a different casting method for those. Traditional kingpin trucks are also by far the more popular style of truck out there, so let's give the people what they want. What that means for this project is while the base plate is a little simpler to cast, the hanger is a bit more complex. You can still cast traditional style hangers with a two-part mold, you just have to be very strategic about where you put the parting line. So in addition to my bucks, I also designed and printed these jigs that will help me get my parting line, sprue, and gate exactly the way I want them. In the last video, I took a stab at casting a base plate, and I was able to learn a lot about sand casting molds from that little experiment. So I totally redesigned my base plate to have less sharp edges, a higher draft angle, and less places for sand to get trapped. I didn't get it 100% right, as you'll see, but it was a big improvement. For the base plates, as opposed to the hangers, the placement of the parting line isn't such a big deal, but the mold halves need to be pulled apart in a very specific way to make sure the cavity in the sand keeps its shape properly. So I designed another set of tools that will help me get those base plates oriented correctly in the molds. Now let me tell you guys, I put just about as much effort into these mold packing tools as I put into the truck design itself. My brain was so fried at the end of all of this. The aluminum I'm going to be casting with is from the housings of a bunch of old routers, and off camera I melted it down and cast it into bars using this graphite mold that came with my furnace. This let me skim most of the dross off of the metal beforehand, which means when I go to cast my trucks I will have much cleaner material to work with. Which is good, because there was a lot of dross. I loaded my crucible and started heating the furnace. I'm aiming to cast at around 750 degrees Celsius, which is about 100 degrees warmer than the melting point of aluminum. While the furnace was getting up to temp, I packed my first mold. I'm starting with a base plate, and I got my buck and other sand forming tools in place. Then I added my green sand. I packed the sand down, striked the mold, and removed my sprue. I flipped the mold, removed the jig from my parting line, coated it with talcum powder to keep the mold half separate, then added sand for the second half of the mold. Once both sides were packed in place, I split the mold and removed my gate and buck. And here, I'll show you guys one of the biggest issues I've run into with this project. I just can't seem to get the sand for the pivot cup in place. I increased the draft angle, I've tried packing it tighter, but it seems to always come away with the buck. I know for a fact that it's possible to cast a shape like this in place, so what's the secret? Any tips you guys could give me on how to get that working better would be such a big help. Please let me know. I used some brass tube to cut my riser. Made myself a pour funnel. And then it was time to cast. In the last video, I asked about how to remove porosity from the surface of casts, and I got a ton of good advice. Mark Bluton commented that aluminum can have a lot of dissolved hydrogen in its molten state, and then as it cools, that hydrogen gets released, causing pores. So to combat that, you can add sodium carbonate, or cleaning soda, to the metal to remove the hydrogen before pouring. So let's give that a shot. Following his advice, I put a small amount in an aluminum foil packet, and 
and dropped it into my molten metal, holding it at the bottom with this piece of mild steel. Whoa. And it certainly seemed to work. The metal bubbled up a bunch and I had some additional slag to skim off. So with my aluminum clean and hopefully degassed, it was time to pour. Next is what became my least favorite part of casting metal, waiting. There is so much waiting. Waiting for foundries to heat up, waiting for molds to cool. I am not a patient man, and all the hours of waiting over the course of this project really did a number on my sanity. Ooh, it's still very hot. Okay. I'm actually, I'm gonna let that cool a little longer before. Oh. All right, try knocking it apart. But eventually, we do get to crack the molds open and bust out the parts. And all things considered, that looks very, very good. I am stoked on that outcome. Next, I need to make a hanger, and the process here is basically the same with one major difference. We need an axle. But don't worry, I've got a plan for that. pretty good. I packed both sides of my mold and carefully removed my buck and gate. I designed my buck in a way that lets me drop in this steel setup stud that I'm using as an axle right into the mold cavity so I can cast my aluminum around it. And then I remembered that I needed gates, so I took the axle back out, cut the gates, and since I'm not sure about how much aluminum is going to flow through such a long, thin section with a piece of relatively cold steel in the middle, I may have gone a little gate crazy. But hey, whatever. It all works out in the end. With the gates cut, I replaced my axle in the mold, then heated it with a propane torch. This will drive any moisture off of the steel to avoid a steam explosion, and the hotter I can get that axle, the better my chances that the aluminum will flow smoothly around it and into the mold. With that done, I can cap my mold and pour my metal. Now there are a lot of questions about whether the embedded axle is a good idea. Will the hot aluminum take the temper out of the steel, making it softer and prone to bending? Is the length of the threads on the axle too long and a weak point? These are all valid concerns, and to be honest, the answer is, I don't know. These hardened steel studs were the closest things I could find to off-the-shelf axles, but there are other options to explore. It's all part of the learning process. I don't know. I don't know. I guess we'll see. Then, after more waiting, Boo! I was finally able to bust open the mold. Well, it's not perfect. I'm gonna have to do some cleanup, but I definitely think I can get this into a usable place. Time to do the parts for the other truck. that, right? 
Once my casts were done, I had to clean them up. I used this little bandsaw to cut my sprues, gates, and risers, and any other major flashing off that I could. And right away, that's starting to look more promising. Next, I grabbed an angle grinder with a flap disc. Ooh, hot. Of course, of course it's hot. Duh. Then moved over to the belt sander. I used a drill to clean up my mounting holes. A rotary tool to fix up my bushing seats. A file to get at everything that I couldn't clean up with the other tools. And finally, a buffing wheel to try to get a more consistent surface finish. Honestly, if I thought the kitchen sink would help, I would have thrown that at it too. The moral of the story is Chris needs to get better at casting so that post-processing isn't a whole project unto itself. The last thing to do was to drill out my kingpin holes. I really wanted to make sure I got this part right, so I printed myself a wedge at the correct angle to help me get my holes in the right plane. I'd love to be able to cast these in place too, but I was having the same problem I had with the pivot cup, where the sand wasn't releasing from the buck. I think if I can't get around that, it might also be a good idea to just cast a pilot hole in place. But with those holes drilled out, all the metal working was done. It's just time to assemble the trucks. Eventually I want to cast a custom set of bushings and pivot cups for these, but for now I'm using some homemade bottom bushings, some top cones and pivot cups off a set of indies, and I've got them set up with my DIY pool wheels. The kingpins are a bit proud, but dang, those look like skate trucks! Let me tell you a little bit about my design. The first thing I did was double up on the mounting holes. Most modern trucks are drilled in the new school pattern, but the base plates themselves are long enough to accommodate the old school pattern as well. For my trucks, the outermost set of holes are the old school pattern, but the two sets of shorter hole spacings are both new school pattern. That means that if your deck is drilled with the new school pattern, you can have four wheelbase options, since you can move either truck closer or further out from the center of the board. I can't be the first person to think of this. Is this a thing? If not, why isn't this a thing? The hangers have a slight taper to them to help reduce weight, and they may also help with locking into grinds, but a better rider than me will have to test that out. And with a pivot cup, I brought over an idea from longboarding and made it a bit wider to give the bushings more space to deform. I'm honestly not sure what this will do outside of changing the feel of the truck, but I'm hoping it will make them more turny or carby. Very technical words there. And yeah, I gotta make some adjustments to the design so the kingpin isn't sticking up so much. But enough of the chit chat already, let's put them on a board and take them out for a ride. stupid spinny thing with my front arm. Uh, not that my allies are very good, but it is kind of throwing me off. That and the wet. Need more practice. But the trucks work. The trucks work. The rain really started coming down after that, so I had to call it quits, but I am so excited. I made trucks. I made trucks. I made trucky truck truck trucks. Trucks. I made them.
<laughs> and it's making me silly. So, there are still a few things that I need to address. I really have to figure out how to get the sand from my mold to stay where I want it. Would Petrobon sand help with that? Should I be using a different mold release? Seriously, any help you could give me on getting that to work would be a game changer. I also need to consider the axle thing. I'm not really sure what to do about that. But once all that's done, and I've got a set of bucks that I can consistently cast good trucks with, I'll be releasing the design open source. So if you think that's awesome, and it is, you can thank these people right here. It is the support over on Patreon that enables me to do the R&D and enables me to release these projects for free. I do do some designs that are paid, but all the open source ones I directly attribute to the support that I get over on Patreon. So if you like projects like this, if you want to see more of them, consider contributing. There'll be a link down in the description below. It is so very appreciated. But these work! And check it! Homemade trucks, homemade wheels, homemade deck, homemade bushings. Even, even there's a little homemade riser hanging out in there. It's just 3D printed. I never really showed you guys how I did that, but as a riser, it's not that complicated. I think I can confidently say that this is the most DIY skateboard deck ever. And we really need to get a DIY setup like this under the feet of some people who, you know, can actually kind of riot. Then isn't there a channel on YouTube full of really good skaters? who do a ton of videos on homemade boards. Well, I've reached out to them, so let's see what happens. And if you want to get those hype engines revving, why don't you let them know we're coming? That's going to be it for this one. If you want to see more awesome DIY board sport projects, just go ahead and subscribe. If you've got questions or comments, leave them down below, especially if you know how to keep mold sand together in cavities like this one, because that would really help. Thanks so much for swinging by. As always, I love having you guys along for the ride. So until next time, I'll see you soon. I win. <laughs>